To Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned through my faults and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my faults, through my faults, through my most gracious faults. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May the Almighty God have mercy on us and forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen.
daily observances of Holy Lent, that we may grow in understanding of the riches hidden in Christ, and by way the conduct pursue their effects. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever.
me le tla ba jwalo ka medimo me le tsebe botle le bobe mosadi a bona hore se fate se ka la tsweha se gahla mahlo me se lakatse ya ka baka la ho hlalisisa a khula ditsholwana tsa sona a dija a ba aneha monna wa haye ya neng a ina le yena le yena a ja ke mo mahlo a bona ba ba bedi a ileng a tutubolloha ba elelwa ho re ba fela ya ba ba gokella mahlaku a sifate sa fenga ba iketsetsa ho ka tinwang lentswe la morena karabelo ya pesa leo o re ha o hele morena ho ba ne ho sitetse Isifundo se spili si chote ingotini ya base Roma. Bazalwa, jengo ba isono sange na imshabe ningu muntu mwenye. Nogufa nge sono, kanjaloke ugufa kwa shurela kubantu bonke. Ngoba bonke boni lengaye. Yebo ugona kwa kukona imshabe ni umteto onga rafi. Kotwa loko kona, kababule loanga, ngoba umteto wa unga gabiko. Noko ugufa kwa pusa kusugela kuhata kuze ube kumose. Na kulabo, na kulabo, abango nanga, jengo, jengo kona kuga ata. Uata wafa negiswa loo uwae kumusa. Koto isipo asifananga neka. Koto anako ngeka lalo muntu mwenye wafa abaningi. Koto anga manta ama kulugazi ikrasia liga nkulu nkulu nesipo esa vela ngisile. Go muntu mwenye uche so kristu. Ugupila pela kwa kikimela abaningi nini. Isi posona asifani nesono esa vela angu muntu mune. Ugwa shule la pela kwa vela angenga yu muntu mune. Waleta isi cheziso. Kotwa isi po ngesiche eli ikrasia. Sa vela go kristo ngenga yezono ezinengi. Sa leta ugutetele. Uma ngo kona kwa kumuntu mwenye ugufa kwa busa ngaye yetu. Baya kubusa kakulu ngempela egupileni labo abapiwa wok jeso kristo ubuningi bekrasi ya ngesipo sogulungi iso. Nga koke jengo ba ngeka lalo muntu mwenye abantu bonge batola ugula ato. Ngokunjalo ngokulunga kumuntu mwenye 
abantu bonke bathola ukulungiswa kube kuphila kwaphakathi njengobaphela ngokungamameli komuntu munye abaningi baba izo kanjalo ke ngokuhlalela komuntu munye abaningi baba ngabalungileyo izwi lenkosi singwa sotwa kodwa uphila ngalelo nalezwi eliphuma emlonyeni kankulunku with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Kana boyo Jesu aiswa ke moya felleng go lekwa ke diabolose Ya ge go ba a itime dijo ka matsatsi a mashume a mane le masiu a mashume a mane ga ba reng a lapa Ya ba muliki wa tamela go yena o re ha ba o mora modimo e re majwe ana a fetohe bohobe Yena a fetola are go motswe go thwe motho ha pele ka bohobe fela empa le ka pulelo yohle etswa molomo wa modimo ya ba diabolosi o monkela motseng o halalelang a mea o dima hloro ya tempele me a re go yena haipa o mora modimo itihele o bane ho motswe ho thwe o tla o laela mangeloi a hae a o khakeletse ka matsoho e sere wa khumula le utu la hao le jwe jeso a re ho yena o motswe hape ho thwe o seke wa le ka mogena modimo wa hao diabolo se a boela a monkela thabeng e pha menga a monta mi buso yote ya lefazi lili koto la yona mi ahi huyena se utoshe kita onea zona hauka itia lefazi wangkuma me yaba jeso uri huyena kuha satan upani humo tui hutui Kimurena, kimurena, mudimu wa hao. 
eo o tlang ho mogumamela ke yena a innotsi eo o tlang ho motlotlisa ya ba diabolosi wa motlohela me mangeloi a tla ho mosebeletsa the gospel of the lord praise to you lord jesus christ We have run short of the glory of God. 
that God is able to enter into our space once more. That's why I want to say to each one of us this morning that it is well with our soul. It is well, it is He was human like us. 
he entered into that space to show that we can persevere into the world that is so fierce. Mm -hmm. The world that is run by principalities and rulers of darkness. Mm -hmm. He said, I must show you the way to discipline your body, to reconnect yourself to the Father who is in heaven, who cares for you, who created you in his own image, who does not rejoice in you perishing or selling your soul to the devil. He said, I must show you how to connect yourself to others as well. Mm -hmm. To give your life to others. I must show you that. And the devil notices that he says, wow, I am in trouble. This man now is getting into a higher level of his spiritual life. If he's going to succeed with these 40 days, 40 nights, I'll be in trouble. Mm -hmm. Now, out of his senses, he thought he was right. He enters into the same space with God. You see, it's the second time that you see the devil and God having a conversation. The first one is the book of Job. Job is noticed that he has lost everything. And he has got everything. And then the devil says, hmm, this yoga is doing very, very well. You see, and it's, what do you want to do to him? God replied to him, I want to test him. This is no, but I cannot test him because the age of grace is surrounding him. Okay? Then God gives him permission. Yeah. Imagine God giving permission for the devil to tempt you. See, that is out of this world. It's anthological, it's unspiritual. God cannot mix with darkness. It's impossible. That tells us something about God, who he is. You see? Then he says, tempt my servant Job. He tempted him. We know the story. What happened? He remained faithful in all his temptations. His friends will tell him, my boy, you are losing everything. Just surrender everything. Give up. There is no need of you sitting in ashes and covering yourself in debt. But this man stood on the word. He said, I shall not go back on the word of God. And he succeeded in his temptation. So the second time now we are seeing him now in the desert with our Lord Jesus Christ. In form of a serpent. Like we had in the first reading again, there was that encounter between Eve and the serpent. Then he begins now to tempt him. He tells him the first temptation. He tempts him with human appetites. If you are a son of God, if you are a daughter of God, turn these stones into bread and eat. Then he says, No, I'm not in need of food. I'm not hungry. I don't need food. Because man shall not live by bread alone, but by the way that proceeds from the mouth of God. That is the encounter that he sees. The devil is shocked. Surprised. This guy, you are angry, you need food, you need power. You need your chicken and chips now. And he says you cannot eat in Lent. Give up that human appetite. Jesus does that. You cannot just depend on your human feelings to sustain your livelihood. You cannot just depend on your fame or your success or everything that you depend on in this earth. You can be well off, you can be intelligent, you can have wisdom, you can be the reservoir of wisdom, but you must have the word of God as a backup. The word of God must reside in you you must know scripture, it must be on your fingertip as a child of God, as a baptized Catholic, as a confirmed Catholic. You need to understand the word of God. Because that is the first weapon that the devil is going to use against you. He will tell you, just justify yourself. You are a human being, you are in land, just go and eat. They won't see you. Just like some of us at Ash Police, they were busy eating in Yama out there. <laughs> they were hiding, hiding, they will not see. It's all, no, 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 that is not what we're talking about. We are talking about the word of God being active and alive in your life, in and out of season. You are just there with the word of God. So Jesus Christ is able to counteract that first temptation by saying, no, 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 I only rely on the word of God. In as much as I am angry, I don't have food, but God is my sustainer. Some of us, we go home without not eating anything from maybe Monday to Friday. Do we die? Some of us, we are very literal in our homes. We don't die. We have water. We have something that we can put in our mouth. We don't have to need 
to live in abundance for us to appreciate the word of God in our lives. No. God can sustain you. God can keep you in your wilderness. God can keep you in your desert. And then God can sustain you and give you strength. Prophet Elijah was able to overcome that. He ran away from the spirit of Jezebel. He stayed in the wilderness, nothing. But God became the provider. God provided for the people of Israel. They were there complaining, walking from Egypt, going to the promised land. God provided manna for them. At the time that they were not even expecting God to show up, he did show up. That's why the moment to step on the word of God, the moment to stand on his promises is your provider. Someone will come at your door and knock. My sister, I will notice that there is no food in your house. Can you have this loaf of bread? Someone will send you an e-wallet from nowhere I didn't even expect. And then he says, my sister, I've been thinking about you. I've been praying for your condition. I've noticed that your children are living in anger and poverty, but I'm going to provide for you today. That is the God that I believe in. A God who will come into your space. We are not even expecting him because he's your provider. So, if you yield to your temptation of human appetite and set aside just because you want to have a piece of meat for that one day, you are missing the point. You must trust in the power of the word of God to counteract evil. The second thing, it takes him now on the mountain top. Wow, a beautiful place. And remember, Jesus Christ is used to mountains. It's not his first time to be on the mountain. The meeting place of the most high God, where you experience tranquility, where you experience love, where you interact with your God. So when I step on this mountain of the altar, when I go up there, when I break him, when I show him to you, I am saying that he's with you. He's with you in your temptation. He's with you in your joy. So Jesus actually is very, very much familiar with the mountain. And then the devil says, Hey, <laughs> I know that God has put angels in your charge. So you can throw yourself. Hey, you see? And the same angels that you have, you see, they will catch you. Hey! And then he looks at you. <laughs> Why should I do that? You understand? Why must I throw myself? So, what was the devil doing? He was testing his divine authority. He was testing if he's able to abuse his power. If he can show off that he is God. But the God that we serve, the God that I know, is the God in the Old Testament, and the God of the New Testament does not show off. He's the arm of God. Is the Lamb of God who takes away the things of the world. He will never show himself that he's the king, but he showed himself as a servant. Because Philippians chapter 2 tells us to say he emptied himself and took the form of a servant. So what was the point of him to show off his divine power? To throw himself up so angels can come and receive him. No, it is us who like to throw ourselves on different kingdoms. The devil will come to you. You are not getting better. Your sickness is incurable. Go and throw yourself at the hands of someone to help you. I do not deny the power of traditional healing in our culture. I do not denounce the healing or the, the sanctification of our ancestors in this process. What I denounce is someone throwing himself to evil, giving you conditions Go and sacrifice this. Throw and say, go and drink blood. I will need you to do this and then you'll be cured. You are throwing yourself in the kingdom of darkness without knowing. You are throwing yourself into blind witchcraft. Some of us, we are witches and we don't know. Because we do ourselves into something that we never know. That's why in our lifestyle we are, com we are compromised. We can't enjoy peace at night. Because we are busy flying without not knowing. <laughs> yes, that is the fact. Because these are things in the spiritual realm where people, you and I, we have opened doors for demons to enter by the things that we do. 
you throw yourself into addiction. They say, I'm not going to, to rely on God to help me with my issue, or my alcohol problem, or my sexual appetite, whatever it is. You throw yourself down into it, and you begin to worship the devil without not knowing. You begin to worship familiar spirits and religious spirits that will just come in this church and they will see and they'll begin to sing, and they'll begin to glorify God. And then when they go back, their lives are not the same. There's no impact. When you receive the Eucharist, you go out there and feel like you just received nothing. You're just walking like a busy body. Well, dry bones like that in your life. Your friends are going up. Your relatives are succeeding because you're a dry bone. You throw yourself to that demonic world. You can't even go. Jesus says, no, I will not show my divine power. And he stood to his ground. Then the other thing which I like most. <laughs> no, sometimes the devil can decrease. <laughs> he says, do you see all these kingdoms? Do you see Mulesani? Mm -hmm. eh? Soweto? Mm -hmm. eh? Johannesburg? Mm -hmm. Free State? These are all my kingdoms. All these are my, my people. So if you bow down, hey, if you bow down and worship me, I will give you Soweto. I will give you Johannesburg. And then he says, wow, does he know that the same scripture that is quoting, it says, every tongue shall confess and every knee shall bow that Jesus Christ is what? <laughs> that is what? No. So, why is he testing him now to say, you must bow down for you, for me to give you all these earthly kingdoms, to give you Soweto, to give you everything. Because the devil himself, he knows the power that is in worship. He was the worshiper, by the way, remember? He was called the worshiper, isn't it? The bearer of light. The favorite of God. So he knew the power of worship. That anybody who worships God in truth and in spirit, he unlock kingdom blessings. That anyone who invests in the kingdom of God and worships in him and follow his ordinances and precepts, God will favor him, whether he likes it or not. That's why I don't play around with worship. When someone is interested to be a worshiper, to usher in the presence of God, that is a very serious assignment. Your mandate is to worship God in truth and in spirit. When you are singing and you are worshiping God, you are participating in the heavenly liturgy. That's what the Mother Church teaches us. That you are there connected with the altar in heaven. You are worshiping your heavenly Father. You are saying, holy, 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 holy. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. You don't bow down and begin to worship each other. When you're singing, you're worshiping your boyfriend. No, that is not your intention. You worship God because he first loves you. You worship God because you love him. You worship God because you have to go and love the other person. You have to show that to him. That is worship. You worship God because you just want to worship him, not because you are looking for money. We enter sometimes in worship expecting something from God, which is good, yes. But sometimes we are misled. We want to show God that we are worshiping him, yet our hearts are far away from him. We only worship him by our lips, as is our good it. You come and proclaim, kwa, 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 and then you go. That is not worship. That's why the enemy is now taking over that temptation. He's taking over our worship. <coughs> You come into worship, what are you doing? You are still thinking about that unforgiveness. I was talking about last week. In this church you are seated here, instead of concentrating on the worshiping of God, you are thinking of the other person. She thinks she's the leader. Or he thinks he's the leader. You are busy in your mind, crowded with all these evil thoughts. In the presence of God, imagine. Whereby you can think about it in your window room while you are watching television. But why is it that whenever you enter in this place, that's when your mind becomes so active about evil things? Some of you are planning evil here in this church. In this church right now. Because
Because that's a space you feel like you are very comfortable and calm. You cannot plan your evil deeds in your house. You come and plan in the way you are supposed to worship God. Jesus refused. I will not bow down to you. And he says, get behind me, Satan. That's why James chapter 4, verse 7, he says, submit to God and resist the devil and he will flee from you. You see? So which means you and I, you have been empowered by God himself to resist temptation. Temptations are with us, but we, can, we cannot fall into them. We can be tempted, but we can decide not to go with the temptation. We can decide to put it aside. Because God has empowered the Holy Spirit within us to handle the enemy or the devil with the word of God. To handle the word of God with prayer. Serious prayer. Yeah. Serious prayer. Not the prayer that you say under your blankets. <laughs> you are saying you're not a hell many full of grace are even dozing. <laughs> no commitment at all. You come here, you're busy. No, 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 no. Fast, fast. No, 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 no. We are talking about a communication with God. You sit down with your father and you express to your father how you feel. You tell him everything your weaknesses and your strengths and say, Father, I'm here in prayer to ask for this. I'm here to pray for my kids. I'm here to pray for my husband. I'm here to pray for a job. I'm here to pray for a relationship. Seriously, by the time you are coming out of that prayer room, after fighting that battle, you even feel the peace of God around you. Because you cannot encounter the presence of God and be nothing. Moses said it. No, 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 we're not, we're not going to go until your presence go before us. You see? So if prayer becomes your weapon now, in this Lenten season, you pray seriously. Then you fast. What are you fasting for? The things I've mentioned in the first temptation, human appetite, food. Don't fast to say, oh, I'll be fasting from 6 o'clock to 6 o'clock p.m. in the evening, and then you have kept your food in the fridge. <laughs> what is that? You are a hypocrite. <laughs> you have. What is the instance of your fasting? You have something and then you say, I'll put it. No, 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 no. Do something about that which you are giving up. You see? You've noticed your neighbor there. Take that food there. Let them eat your food for 40 days, 40 nights. Uh -huh, you are saying, ooh. <laughs> because you can't give up on that. But you are mandated for you to discipline your body and your soul. You need to deny something that you love. Then you are able to control temptation. Okay. And there are many appetites that I don't want to mention because there are young kids in here. <laughs> so I just leave them for you. The Spirit of God is telling you right now where you are sitting. <laughs> you will know what you do. You know what to do with your internet and your phone. You know what to do in your space. Where you go at 1 o'clock a.m., we know. We see you. We see you. So you better fast from that. To say, Father, I am fasting from going out at 1 o'clock. And do what I do that night. For 40 days, 40 nights. No more jiggling, jiggling, jiggling. <laughs> yes, no more that. So you are giving up that time to now reconnect yourself with God. You begin to ask the Father. To say, Father, please let me use this one hour at a.m. to pray for you and to pray for others. Three o'clock you are up. Say the divine mess. Asking for God's mess. Six o'clock you are up. Praying. You will see. You will see after 40 days. You will not go back there. Because the moment someone enters and climbs the mountain of the Lord in prayer and fasting, my God, there is just something that happens to us. We become like Him. How do I say that? Because you and I, according to Ephesians chapter 1, you are blessed from the foundation of time. Hey, you have been redeemed. You are under the cover of redemption of our Lord Jesus Christ. So therefore, once you follow the, the, these precepts and ordinances of prayer, fasting, 
And then the last one, which we are thinking about, arms giving. Giving something that is precious to you. It's not just about material things. It could be your time. You give your time to someone. You listen to them. You say, God, I'm giving something my time to this person who is suffering. There are so many of us who are still under the spirit of depression and anxiety and stress. You need someone to help you, someone to listen to you, someone to be with you, someone to help you, to journey with you in that process. You give arm to that particular person. You show them love. That young girl in your house, that young boy who has no father, go there as a man. Go be present there. Go and hug him. Go and show him how to love. That lady who is contemplating to commit abortion because there is no father, there are no resources. You as a mother, as a grandmother, go to that particular lady. Go and encourage her to keep the child. That man is suffering because he has been unemployed for many, many years. And you who is sitting in this church, you are an administrator. You are a contractor. And you know that one of these young men in here, they have no work. Go to him. You say, young man, for this next 40 days, I'll give you a job. I will surrender part of my work hours to you. I know I'm not going to be employed, but for the next 40 days, half of my salary will be going to you. That is arms giving. You are showing love. You are extending your hand to them. All these things, I will no longer wear a face of bitterness on me. I will try to love. I will try to show compassion to others. You make that decision. You are giving yourself to others. You are building relationships. This year, I will attend Mass regularly. I will be able to come for Mass every Sunday and offer myself before the altar. You are giving yourself to Him. This Lenten season, I will be able to attend confessions. I will go for confession and repair my life and reconcile with my God. You are giving something. That's the first thing. Then the rest can be practical. Give what you have. Remember, and this is my philosophy and other people's philosophy that I've read, that when God blesses you with two shirts, one belongs to you, the other belongs to her. That's spiritual logic. That you and I, God blesses us so that we can bless others. So in this Lenten season, my dear brothers and sisters, let us embrace all these virtues that God has given us in Matthew chapter 4. That we may be tempted, but God is still with us. That we may go through suffering. Sunday, Easter will come and we shall rejoice. Do not despair. God is with you. God is on your side. Because you and God are the majority. God bless his work. My dear brothers and sisters, let us now stand and profess our faith. I believe in one God. Kidumela, Umudi Montatia Marsha, Oshi, Mopi, Walu Hudi Mol, Walifazi, Liuchi, So Creste, Morawaya, Inozi, Emorana, Warona, Ya Emotswing Kamoya, O Halalelang, Ya Tsuing Maria Mufireko, Ya Ufisitian Bufuku, Posonia Ponsos Pilato, Ya Chakisitian Sifa Pano, Ashwa Apato, Libitian, Ateo Helan, and Munia Bafu, Atua Bafu, Kalatan Anyu Hela, Udimu, Uduzi Kalitso, the Lituna, the Mudimun Tatia Matra Rufi, Mimu Kapushati, Nuka, Fula, Pila, and Liva Shuli, Kidumela, Umoya, O Halalela, Ukereke, Halalela, Eka Tudik, Sibikani, Sabahali, 
Soare lui a divin, zvoi a lafum, vivo filo sa fede. Amen. In the temptation of Jesus Christ, we see the persistent power of evil. But he vanquished our enemies, and so we offer our prayers, confidently asking for his strength. That all of God's people may be strong in resisting temptations. That every person may hear the call to receive Christ's free gift of grace. That those in need of work and financial help will receive them. That we will know the mercy of God as we confess our sins. That the dead may be cleansed from their sin.
family, gracious Father, as we begin our Lenten season, and help us to be faithful, we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen.
my dear brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and your prayers, especially your special intentions this morning, be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Amen. Give us the right dispositions, O Lord, we pray, to make these offerings for with them we celebrate the beginning of the venerable and sacred time, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We give them unto the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is really right and just our duty and our salvation, always and ever to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord, by abstaining for 40 days from earthly food, be consecrated through this fast, the pattern of our Lenten observance, and by overturning all the snares of the ancient serpent, taught us to cast out the leaven of malice, so that celebrating the wed celebrating wedding the Paschal mystery, we might pass over at last to eternal Paschal feast. And so, with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise as without end we acclaim.
You are indeed, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy therefore this gift, we pray, by sending your spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, he entered willingly into his passion. He took bread, giving thanks and broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. And we pray that partaking in the body and the blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread out throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, Booty our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us, all we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed Joseph, our spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life 
and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, O glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we are there to say, Our Father. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will. We live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your so, my dear brothers and sisters, it being the first Sunday of Lent, again you turn to your neighbor and tell him or her that. Please don't tempt me to evil.
My dear brothers and sisters, behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord,
now with heaven in bread, by which faith is nourished, hope increased, and charity strengthened. We pray, O Lord, that we may learn to hunger for Christ, the true and living bread, and strive to live by every word which proceeds from your mouth, through Christ our Lord. Amen. the fire of your love. Send forth your spirit and we shall be created and we renew the face of the earth. Let us pray. O God, whom by the light of the Holy Spirit deep inside the hearts of the faithful, grant that in the same spirit we may be truly wise and ever rejoice in his consolation through Christ our Lord. Amen. Full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Mother of good counsel, pray for us.
God, the source of all holiness, extend your blessing upon your children, your daughters, and our mothers, the women's day. May you bless them during this Lenten season, so that they may commit to you and commit to their constitution. We pray that you may guide them and protect them and their families. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thanks be to God.